Welcome back Retro Gang. Today we go in depth on everything shown within the Tools of Destruction trailer during Night City Wire Episode 2. If you like this type of content, do me a solid. Hit that like button for the Y tag. It helps me out more than you know. Alright, you ready? Strap in boys. Let's ride. Getting right into it, in the very first scene we are clearly in Watson, with the focal point being V's mega apartment building. The Notel Motel, which is V and Dexter's meeting point in the events of the 2019 cinematic trailer, is nearby. Night City has become synonymous with consumerism and much like others, there's many ads within this trailer as well. Atop the motel, behind the antenna is a Nilfgaard ad, which could be an erotic brain dance or product. Either way, it's a nod to the Nilfgaardian Empire from the Witcher series. There's also several instances of this ad that promotes the metal over meat movement. Danalab Cybernetics, and Tucked Away is a new rendition of the Mr. Stud ad. The scene continues with a call from Wakako Okada, a fixer that gives V an arms deal job with the Maelstrom. Can we just take a second to appreciate the beauty and verticality of this scene? CDPR has stated many times that majority of buildings will be explorable. At 27 seconds in, we move into V's updated apartment building and armory, doing much better in the visuals department from 2018. Even V's samurai jacket looks a lot better with the slight illumination in the logo. On the weapons wall is an all-red Arasaka Monokatana, the M179 Achilles Tech Rifle and the 8-barrel L69 Zuo Smart Shotty, all of which we'll see later on in the trailer. As V prepares his Arasaka pistol, we get a good look at the side profile of the Zuo Smart Shotgun. There's some ammo, as well as the same pills here that we saw in Corpo V's throw up scene in the Life Paths trailer. As we zoom into the Tsunami Nekomata Sniper, it displays more of the tech weapons available to us. From left to right is the Serata Shotgun, the Militech made Achilles Rifle, as well as the Quasar. Cut off in the corner is the RT 46, what looks like it could be a heavy caliber pistol. The trailer continues with the deconstruction of the Nekomata, showing that almost every piece is interchangeable. It continues by cycling through several models of Militech and Nakota Sniper scopes. We may even be able to customize some of our attachments with stickers. At 55 seconds in, V lines up a Tiger Claw's ganger for a kill shot. He's wearing a gold oni mask and may have gorilla arms augmentations. In the next scene, we appear to be in Santo Domingo, possibly in the Aurora sub-district from the dilapidation of the area and the presence of 6th street colors on these barriers. V is wielding the Achilles tech rifle. The barrel extensions are retracted in its zoomed in state. It currently has 3 shots available and the option of 2 modes with the ability to lock those modes. We can see a difference in the destructiveness of a zoomed in fully charged shot versus a regular one in the following scene. There's also more Mr. Stud and Dana Labs ads above. At 58 seconds in, V reloads the Serata Tech shotgun. It's a double barrel, so a maximum of two shots are available. There's also only one trigger. We can see that it's made by Rastovic, a low tier manufacturer. Moving on, we're still wielding the Serata shotgun as we get our first look at these clown mask gangers. It's been talked that these may be 2077's version of the Bozos gang, but there isn't enough information here to support or deny that speculation. It appears that we're somewhere in Pacifica from the stadium in the background. Before moving on, I want to compare this shotgun's visuals to that of its 2018 version, and there's definitely a significant improvement overall. In the next scene, V is fighting another mask ganger. This time, the fully charged shot completely obliterates his weapon and showcases the ragdoll and realistic clothing physics in the game. 1 minute and 4 seconds in, we get an overview of the weapons categories that will be available to us. The trailer just covered the tech weapons, so next we'll see power weapons, then smart weapons, and finally melee weapons and cyberware. At the bottom, we also have weapon mods and attachments. Moving into the power weapons category, we have the Carnage Shotgun, made by Budget Arms, a low tier weapons manufacturer. From left to right, we have the Tsunami New Pistol, the SOAR 22, the Masamune, and the Militech made Lexington M10. The Mox's branding on this weapon looks dope, by the way. Next scene is a cyberpunk yellow version of the same gun, this time with its manufacturer's branding on the side. We're likely in Pacifica again. It's the only place that would have a flamingo lit up in the night like this. There's also a king-sized ad beside it. 1 minute and 10 seconds in is another color variant of the Carnage Shotgun and a better look at the clown mask gangers. He's charging with an alpha baton in a really confused looking set of gear. A helmet and a combat bulletproof vest with dress pants and loafers? <laughs> His buddy looks like he's going for a run in a heavy raincoat and joggers. Anyway, beside those losers is an overturned five door Thornton and a suggestive ad for a club or brain dance parlor. In the next scene is a dope version of an unknown double barrel shotgun, showing off the ricochet feature of the power weapons. We've known for a while that vehicles and buildings are destructible, but it's clear that there's some more polish needed here. This Valentino's ganger has no eyes, very low res textures, and is clipping through the vehicle. 
With all that said, the explosions are incredible and have some of the best visuals and realism I've ever seen in a game. Notice the van didn't hop 20 feet in the air. Moving on, V reloads the Masamune rifle in the next scene, possibly made by Tsunami or Kang Tao, judging from the Japanese kanji on the side here. I also think that this is the first we've seen a suppressor on a weapon. We might be in an old Haywood bar, there's Valentino symbolism and Spanish graffiti everywhere. The guy that did this one doesn't like Jackie too much because pinche or pinch is a vulgar way of saying someone has no value or is small. There's also Biotechnica's new logo on the TV here. At 1 minute 14 seconds in is the reloading animation for the Constitutional Arms Defender, then its full auto capabilities. It shoots quite a bit slower and has a bigger recoil than we've seen in the past. CDPR may have decided that it didn't feel heavy or weighted enough for an LMG. I like the changes. It's also pretty cool that there's targeted dismemberment, meaning you can shoot an enemy in the leg and he'd be forced to stop. If you're using a heavy caliber weapon, you can completely take it off. Moving into the smart weapons category, we have the Shinjin, the Palika, the Dian, the Zuo, and an unknown Nakoda weapon at the end. The next scene is a quick glimpse at the Dian, then back to a weapon inspection of the Shinjin. Can we take a second to appreciate the beauty of the animations and character and gun models? Man. 1 minute 25 seconds in, V inspects the beautiful Zuo 8 barrel smart shotgun. It also looks like we'll be getting some help from Jackie in this mission. That may mean there's a choice to whether Jackie lives or dies in the gig. Fingers crossed. Then the next scene is the Palika, under the overpass in the north side industrial subdistrict of Watson. Significantly better tone and visuals from 2018. We'll do another comparison of the Dion to the Type 41 in the same scene from 2018. The reticle design has changed entirely and is significantly smaller. Also, the Type 41 and the Dion are identical in almost every way. The weapon may have been scrapped or had a name change. V is fighting the Maelstrom again, this time with the Palika. As you can see, the reticle is much larger. We also get a hit marker this time. In the next scene is an unknown automatic pistol. Again, look at the reticle, it's much smaller. It seems smart launchers and shotguns have the largest room for error, then SMGs, and then pistols. At 1 minute 33 seconds, the smart weapons category ends with a look at one of the Wraith's hideouts, the Corp Bud Cement Factory out in the Badlands. V is using a really forgiving bolt-action sniper to effortlessly brain this Wraith ganger. Smart weapons seem to be the more accessible weapons weapons category. Melee weapons are next. We've got the Thermal Katana, the Electric Alpha Baton, Spike Bat, the Sledgehammer, and the Tanto at the end. Tantos are small rigid knives usually used as a secondary for a quick and deep stab when an opening in armor is spotted. Jackie has one on his side. In the next scene we appear to be in the Clown Mass hideout. V blocks his attacks, then strikes and slices his partner in the following scene. As the ganger dies we get our first look at how loot will drop in the game. I think these clown guys are actually scavs. Look at the two barrels of arms they've no doubt stripped from unwilling participants. At 1 minute 40 seconds in is V splitting this guy's skull with an all black version of the Arasaka Mono Katana. On the wall is what they do with the unmilling participants I mentioned earlier. Moving on into the cyberware category we have the Mantis Blades, the Mono Wire, the Projectile Launch System, the Gorilla Arms, and another that we can't entirely make out. The Mantis Blades and the melee gameplay looks miles better than it did before as it rips up this Tiger Claws gang member. He's wearing an Oni mask and his Yabba biker jacket with some pretty cool looking boots. We have one more instance of the game not being fully polished yet as well. At 2 minutes in, V is in some kind of scrapyard out in the Badlands, using the gorilla arms to rip this mounted weapon from its base. Then a heavy punch on this Valentino's ganger. You can see the mechanical springs contract as he charges the punch. The attention to detail here on the projectile launch system deserves a mention. The final scene is V packing up his weapons for the job. The only one that wasn't shown is this heavy caliber pistol that looks very similar to this Malorian arms pistol from the world of Cyberpunk 2077 lore book. Thanks so much to those that made it straight to the end. Don't forget to leave a like for the Y tag and consider subscribing for more Cyberpunk 2077 content.